Thank you very much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields, and thank you for all the likes on yesterday's video. Thank you for the, taking the time to do that. All right, let's get to a couple things. First thing is this. This is Ernesto. Winds right now are at 85 miles per hour. That's about 137 kilometers an hour, and it will get stronger some. Now, looking at it closely, here are the Turks and Caicos and Bahamas. Here's Florida, all to the east in over water, but this is headed to Bermuda and close to eastern Canada. I want to get into the event impacts, uh, but a little bit of dry air sneaking in. You see this almost yellow shading or even this blue shading in here. That's good news uh, that we're getting some dry air that's in this. It's slowing down some of the strengthening. Of course, I don't want it to strengthen at all, but it is going to strengthen a bit more. But the dry air sneaking in here is better. Just slower some of that uh, strengthening. I want to get into the uh, specifics for Bermuda. All islands uh, matter big or small uh, when it comes to the weather. Uh, I don't care if there's one person on the island or thousands. I want to track it for you for uh, safety's sake. Here's the bigger picture. Gulf, pretty quiet. Been watching scattered showers and storms. Nicaragua even had a couple in Belize. And we're going to watch this tropical wave out here. Now, I mentioned a few things to watch. One, obviously, Ernesto that we've been watching. Thinking of you in Bermuda and across the northeastern Caribbean with some of the cleanup. But this here, one tropical wave. Not seeing organizations with this. So give us a little bump up in the rain chance just to the east now of Barbados in and then watching a few tropical waves as we work our way toward the coast of Africa. It does look like later this month, which really isn't too far away, we are going to get more development out of the tropical waves. There's been a little bit of a lull right now, which is good. We could take the breather for, for some of us, but watching the next waves coming off, there should be some development in about a week or two. And I'm going to dive into that in further videos, and we know stuff's going to happen. We're going to get more development, so we'll just track it storm uh, by storm together. Now, Here's the uh, latest. I mentioned the winds around 85 uh, miles per hour. This is headed to Bermuda, where hurricane warnings are in effect. Now, more of the trends have been a stronger front over here, which is good because that is trying to help this kind of curl out. So Cape Breton, for example, uh, some of the uh, information, some of what I've been seeing in the environment has been a little bit better, but still it's going to be a very close call. Atlantic region of Canada in uh, Newfoundland for some stronger winds. I'll highlight that in a moment, but in the short term, uh, the models have this uh, very close, if not on top of uh, Bermuda. So let me start wide and then I want to zoom down with some of the winds. So you can see here, here's Bermuda right here. I'm going to zoom down in a moment. You see here, this is the American model. The models are pretty similar. Some have the center on top of Bermuda, some just east, some west. Still wait and see, but we're going to see those impacts moving in, especially later on Friday. Later tomorrow, the tropical storm impacts move in tomorrow night into early overnight, tomorrow night into early Saturday. The hurricane impacts right on top of Bermuda. We're going to have hurricane conditions moving in. I'll highlight the winds uh, that I'm seeing with this. So this is by Saturday morning. And then as we work our way through Saturday, it'll gradually start to lift to the north through the morning hours. Still the hurricane conditions on Saturday in Bermuda. And then as we hit Saturday afternoon, this will start to lift to the north. Conditions will start to get better. And then watching down the road, here's uh, Cape Breton, for example, as you get over toward uh, Nova Scotia, uh, it should be just to the south. Still, I'm not positive, so we're watching it closely, but I am more concerned, uh, less concerned with uh, uh, Cape Breton. Um, take that with a grain of salt. I'm concerned about everyone, as you know, uh, but it's looking a little bit better, but getting closer to a Newfoundland, kind of this curl. I just needed to curl a little bit more and stay over water, uh, but as of now, it looks like we're going to at least get some stronger winds in uh, at least the southern end of a Newfoundland as we work our way into Monday and potentially into Tuesday, and then that will move, but that's the front we're watching. We just need this front to stay strong and almost speed up. So there is some better news as we work our way toward uh, Canada, which I'll highlight in a moment. But here is Bermuda right here, right? These are the winds, kilometers an hour and miles per hour in this map. Let me stop it here. This is overnight tomorrow night. So this is midnight. We get into Friday night, early Saturday. You see here's Bermuda here, the strong hurricane winds. You see that yellow shading there. Those are winds of 90 miles per hour or 145 kilometers an hour. This is the center of it. The American model has it almost moving right on top of Bermuda with a direct hit. The worst weather, of course, right around uh, that, that eye wall that will be possible. So we're looking at the potential of that direct hit in Bermuda. So we're taking those precautions. Uh, Bermuda uh, does this so well during the hurricane season, just kind of locks everything uh, down, gets uh, super ready. And then this will lift to the north. This is by Saturday afternoon. Still some gusty winds, but that eye wall, that's what I'm really hoping avoids Bermuda. Right now, it looks like uh, not sure which side of the eye wall, but right now that 
that's what we need to prepare for. The iWall has the strongest winds, and as of now, it looks like almost all of the models have uh, at least a piece of that catching Bermuda, which is not great, obviously. Uh, uh, still some time that this could shift a little bit more, but right now we're going to see very strong winds moving in. And then here's the broad picture to show you what happens. Here's that circulation moving up right into or very close to Bermuda as we work around right to the second half of tomorrow, first half of Saturday. That's the worst weather in Bermuda. Then after that, it's going to lift to the north, watching the front back here. That's what's going to be key. So as we go throughout the day on Saturday, there's going to be a front that's diving by uh, the Great Lakes right in here, and that's what's going to help to kind of steer this. But still, here is a Saturday, 11 o'clock in the morning, still the tropical storm or hurricane conditions in Bermuda, and then it starts to leave. Now, pulling forward into Sunday. This is Sunday night into Monday. This is Monday. There's going to be a front in here. There's a little change in direction of the winds, which tells me there's a front here helping to curl this very close to Nova Scotia. It looks like the center would be just offshore. And then here's Newfoundland. By the time uh, we get into a Monday night, Tuesday morning, Monday night, that's when we could have some strong winds. Uh, southern sections of Newfoundland, some of the winds could be anywhere from 50 to 70 miles per hour or 80 to 100. 110 kilometers an hour. So watching this, and I'll be highlighting this the last few days to try to track these storms start to finish for you and leave uh, no one uh, behind. So we get a closer look here. Let me just take you on time. Next couple of days, uh, this is today. This is into uh, tomorrow uh, as we work our way. A couple showers and storms. Here's that front, this moisture here. This is what I'm watching. This is on Saturday. Here comes this front. We just need it to speed up a little bit more. You see the rain and storms in the mid-Atlantic of the U.S. And then right there, here comes this system. There is Ernesto, so here's Nova Scotia, watching New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island, all of this looking to be to the south, but here's that front, that green right there. So as we work our way into Monday, here we go. It starts to make that curl. As that front pushes in, it starts to help curl this, watching Cape Breton. We'll see if we get any rain bands moving in. I'll be uh, fine-tuning that the next couple days, but then this gets oh so close uh, late on Monday to southern Newfoundland. If we could just move this off a little bit, that would be huge news as of now. It looks like the potential of tropical storm conditions, borderline hurricane conditions, southern uh, Newfoundland as we work our way later on Monday. And then early on Tuesday, whatever it is or wherever it goes, will begin to depart as that front works in. So that's the outlook. So let me zoom down. Mention all islands matter. Here's Bermuda. We're clearly in action mode. We've been talking about this, I think now the third day of action uh, mode, just trying to give you that very early heads up. So everything on track, everything holding. Hurricane warnings are up. Worse weather late on Friday into especially the first half of Saturday. So we're making the full hurricane preparations in Bermuda, and you want to have those finished by noon tomorrow, because after noon tomorrow, that's when the tropical storm conditions will start to work in, and then quickly, obviously, uh, the uh, hurricane conditions will follow that. So in Bermuda, this would be the uh, worst case scenario I'm seeing as of now. Winds could be around 95 miles per hour or 150 kilometers an hour. When I was putting together this forecast, I had the winds around 110 miles per hour. I've lowered that based on some of that dry air sneaking in. In, which is good. Uh, not seeing it getting as strong as it, it may have looked yesterday, but 95 miles per hour, 150 kilometers an hour, that's, that's a problem. So uh, watching that, we're looking at a, about a category two hurricane, uh, give or take, category one, category two, uh, and uh, rain, 150 millimeters or six inches of rain could be a little bit more depending on if that eye wall, if we get in that eye wall, that's where we're going to have the torrential uh, rain, but that gives us a feel there. Now, as we work our way here, I've shrunk this mode. I know uh, resources, time, that's money, that's that's just, you know, such a, a big issue. So I tr try to really uh, kind of uh, 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 move this zone down as much as I can. I move this out of the uh, Nova Scotia area, just really looking Newfoundland where we're in monitor mode, but that doesn't mean we're not really doing anything right now. We're starting those initial plans. We were hopefully starting that yesterday. What will we do tomorrow? If this looks like it's coming at us tomorrow, then we'll be in full action mode, but this could clip by, say, over toward uh, St. John's. This track is going to change. We've seen it change. Yesterday morning it was looking a little bit worse for Nova Scotia. We've had some improvements over the last 24 hours with that front back to the west. As far as the strength goes, right now it's a category one, should become a 
Category 2. Almost everything doesn't show it a Category 3 at this point. That's because what I'm seeing, that dry air going in. So it's not getting as strong as quickly, and that is some good news. But we've still got a hurricane rolling right into Bermuda, and you see those seas that are going to be cranking up. This is later today. Those bright colors, 6 meters, or we're looking at over 25 feet in some spots. You see it right there, upwards of 30 feet plus near Bermuda, and this is as we work our way into Saturday. This is Saturday. Those swells moving in the Bahamas uh, back through the United States. What that means is uh, we're going to see a dangerous risk of rip currents all across this area here as those swells move in. And then the seas are really going to be building. Seas are going to be a different story in Nova Scotia. Yeah, this doesn't look like it's going to roll right into us. But of course, the elevated seas, there will be some coastal overwash and coastal flooding. And then, of course, watching on Monday uh, to see how close this gets to uh, Newfoundland. Now, in the short term, Costa Rica, Panama, we've had a little bit more rain. And you can see here, this here's uh, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Turks and Caicos. Here it is. Uh, this is leaving, lifting up to the north, unfortunately headed to Bermuda. But as we get into tomorrow, I'm going to keep an eye on that uh, tropical wave that's over here. The models aren't picking up on that uh, too well, but I showed you at the beginning of the video, you can see that area of rain and storms. So that should bump up the uh, rain chance for some of us, say Barbados, St. Lucia, could get some scattered showers and storms. St. Vincent, the uh, Grenadines down through Trinidad and Tobago. This is on Saturday, but a little lull in the tropical action in the Caribbean. But at this point, I'm going to start to be able to see what's going on near Africa and start to get a handle on those new tropical waves that uh, some of them will develop. We know that. And then I'll, I'll be tracking those and letting you know uh, from uh, Trinidad back through Jamaica, Belize, where those may eventually go. As far as the uh, rain is concerned, this is really spotty. Of course, you see the heavier rain over the uh, water where Ernesto is. Hit or miss shower storm may give you 25 millimeters of rain or 50 millimeters of rain. Uh, a lot of us on the dry side at this point, that little lull in some of the uh, action uh, from Saba down toward Martinique where uh, Saba, I saw some of the video, thank you for sending me that, where we've uh, been dealing with some of the uh, cleanup. Uh, St. Lucia, Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Venezuela, passing shower storm, and not even as much Guyana and Suriname. So our direction is gonna start to change off to the east over by Africa. Scattered areas of rain and storms a little bit higher, Costa Rica and Panama, where we could get 75 millimeters of rain or three inches of rain. And around Mexico City, we're going to see some areas of flooding central southern parts of uh, Mexico. Now, we get back here in the eastern Pacific. A couple of these areas may try to develop, even this blob over here, but it looks to stay to the south of Hawaii. So I am monitoring what's going on, of course, on the eastern Pacific side. But about a 40 to 50 percent chance of some scattered showers and storms in Jamaica. Cayman Islands, uh, we're going to see about a 30% chance the next few days. Trinidad and Tobago, rain chance about 40 to 50%. And we'll see that again in Barbados, watching that next little tropical wave moving in. Fortunately, not developed. Watching St. Lucia for some scattered showers and storms. A passing shower storm possible in Grenada. And uh, we get back towards St. Vincent and the Grenadines, about a 50% chance. So not a guarantee we get rain. 30% chance in Martinique. Dominica, 30 to about 50% chance the next few days in a 30 to 40% chance in Guadeloupe. Rain chance, only 20% chance. Antigua and Barbuda today could get a passing shower tomorrow. St. Kitts, Nevis, and Montserrat the next three days on the low side. Next couple days on the low side. Anguilla and St. Bart's, 20 to 30% chance. St. Martin, Saba, and Stacia. Next couple days in Puerto Rico, drier with that action up to the north. Of course, the seas are still very elevated. U.S. and British Virgin Islands, rain chance very low, mainly dry. Bahamas also on the low side. Some dry air wrapping in around Ernesto for the Bahamas all the way down through the uh, Turks and Caicos. Isolated shower storm in the Dominican Republic. And of course, we are very hot. Haiti, rain chance stays minimal at 20% and a 30% chance of a passing shower storm in Belize. We've had a couple of this morning and overnight in our southern sections, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. We are mainly dry over at least the next three days. Guyana, the rain chance has dropped off and it has definitely dropped off in Serna. We're only looking at a 20% chance. Isolated shower storm the next three days in Cuba, Costa Rica, and Panama. That's where we're still seeing some areas of rain around. 30 to 40% chance in Nicaragua and a 30 to 40% chance over the next three days as we get back toward Honduras. Rain chance Guatemala and El Salvador, about a 60% chance. Monitoring some areas of flooding around Mexico City. Rain chance in the Yucatan, 30 to 50% the next couple of days. Northern Colombia, 
isolated shower in northern Venezuela, an isolated 20 to 30 percent chance. Of course, Bermuda, that front around right now, but all eyes on tomorrow night, especially second half of Friday into the first half of Saturday. So Ernesto, it will be getting stronger. It's going to get stronger as it approaches Bermuda. It'll move in late tomorrow, and then it will be close to eastern Canada, and I'll be watching that, of course, and then watching off the coast of Africa for what's next uh, as uh, we watch these uh, tropical waves that will eventually develop some and get closer to the Caribbean. Got you covered right here. We'll just take it storm by storm as we go throughout the uh, season. So thinking of you, if you're dealing with some of the cleanup, the aftermath, of course, with Ernesto and Bermuda over toward uh, Newfoundland, we're thinking of you down the road with Ernesto. I'll get to those comments throughout the day. Please be safe and have a good day ahead.